What if we had a device that is open source and you can change whatever you want? Well, have you ever thought about changing your web interface? No? Let's take a look inside, into your BitX. How awesome would it be if you actually do have a system, a Bitcoin miner that you can control because it's open source and fully in your control? Well, that is what the BitX is. And we have one lovely member in our community, Open Source Miners United. And if you're unaware about this community, check out discord.gg slash OSMU. This is our Discord server where we do share insights and answer questions to people who are interested in it. So today we want to take a look into a system that modified something on the BitX, especially the web interface. Meet Xwell UI. This right here is the GitHub repository of Axwell UI, created by Ruhos, who is also a member of our community, by the way. And he just said, well, I'm a developer. I love the BitX, but I want to create a slightly different web interface. And he did. You don't need to change anything apart from just downloading one file. Well, there is a caveat to it, and we will talk about this later when it comes to actually updating it and taking a look into it. But so the GitHub repository is here. It's called Xwell UI, created by Ruchers. And uh, yeah, I'll leave the link to that in the video description down below so that you can check that actually out. The cool part here is that he also does have a release page where he shows the changes and so on. And on that, if you click on it, the current latest release is version 1.4.1. There is a www.bin file. So you know what? Let's download that. Let's put that in here. Let's overwrite my file. And we've downloaded it. And now let's hop over to our BitX. We are already on the download or update page. And here's, here's a thing. I never talked about the version 2.10.1, which is a minor bug fix. This version was released two days ago, but I haven't made a video because it's it's not that relevant compared to the next major update, which will be the version 2.11. But don't get me wrong, it is relevant for everybody who does have a 602, because some of the manufacturers do use different components and others. So quality varies a little bit. And with the version 2.10.1, there was a bug fix when it comes to the actual component, the TPS 546, which does have different versions of it. There's an A version, an S version, and a couple other ones. And apparently some manufacturers produce the 602 with the TPS S version. And there are slightly different initialization things. Don't worry about it. But if you had an issue with your BitX 602 that some people already do sell, then update to this version, to the version 2.10.1. But let's go back into the update section of just using a new web interface. So what we want to do is we want to go over to our BitX interface and go over to the update page because there is no other change need. You just need to upload the www.bin file. So we click on browse. I select the www.bin file. I open it and I upload it to the BitX. That's it. Basically we're done and now we do have a new web interface, but let's wait for it to actually update the file and then we'll take a look into it and how different it looks and what I do love about it. So the first thing that you will actually notice is your BitX now does have a new web interface and you get a blank page, nothing is happening there. Well, don't worry about it. Just go over into the URL section and remove everything and just paste in the IP address of it. Boom, here we go. We're in, in the new web interface. The issue with that is there is no automatic routing when it comes to the update. So usually on the XOS web interface, you update the website or you update the backend of it, the ESP-minor binary file, then it will automatically refresh the web page. With an update over to XWell UI, you won't get that. So that's one thing, uh, but that's not bad. That's okay. So this right here is the dashboard. This is the new interface that he created that he thinks is more appealing to him. And uh, a couple of people actually do share this and say, well, that, that kind of looks nice. 
we have a minimalistic overview of things that are going on. There is no big hash rate graph and so on. To be honest, I don't think there's really a need for that. Um, I myself don't really like the hash rate graph that we do have because it's really distracting. But apart from that, uh, obviously a lot of people find that cool, but others say, well, it is fluctuating that much in hash rate. What's going on? Is my device broken? No, it's totally normal. That is that is what's happening with AC chips. They do fluctuate when it comes to the hash rate. But let's now take a look on it. So we do have this standard dashboard where you get your hash rate in giga hashes here. You also get a maximum and a minimum value that it does have recorded over the period of time that you are connected to it. And you also do see the efficiency. You get a little bit of information about the best network difficulty. Um, well, that's, it could be changed to best difficulty, not best network difficulty, because the network difficulty is uh, way higher in the T area, not in the G area. So. Maybe that needs to be changed, but apart from that, there are a little bit of texts next to these things. So it's it's lovely. It is running on your BitX. If you want, you can change it too. There are also information about the main pool, the fallback pool. We can take a look into the locks, which will open up a lock overview here. So this, this web interface is written in Vue, so it's a different stack or a different framework, you can call it like that that's been used to create this framework and this interface. Sure, it looks a little bit different and maybe you need to get used to it, but it, it's also appealing in my opinion. One of the cool things is you can actually change the language of stuff in here. So we, or he currently does have English, Spanish, uh, French and Russian in here. We also have a light mode, but I hope you don't use that. What the fuck? Eh? Let's go back. <laughs> and uh, yeah, the power consumption down here, it is it is really minimalistic. And I like I like it. I like it really much, to be honest. If you go over to Swarm, Swarm should be more or less the same. It takes a little bit of time to scan for other devices. And uh, then we should get a little bit of information about different devices. So we do see there are some other devices here in the network. Again, it's uh, totally totally minimalistic. It just gives you plain IP addresses. It gives you the uptime of these devices, the hash rate, as well as the temperature and power consumption. Here we go. All right. That's a cool thing. I haven't seen the last time I checked it out. There is something to calculate your daily expenses. All right. So let's say you have like 10 cents per kilowatt hour and uh, we use USD. You now see you pay 63 cents for this entire stack that I do have running. And currently I'm running around 15, 16 terahash at 17 joules per terahash. So it's it's a little bit. It's okay. Half of that is running outside in my shed and using solar. So I'm fine with that. And uh, obviously the electricity cost, you can play around with that. I think that's a nice thing. And uh, adding that in here, it is it is funny. It's funny. If you go over to pool, we obviously can see that in here, we can set lots of different things here. The extra nonce is also in here. We can enable that or disable that. If you go over to the settings, this is also completely minimalistic. You can also select different updates for the web interface and the ESP minor version in here. We can set the temperature to our liking. We can also set the mining power, which is interesting. So it is applying both things at the same time. That's interesting, but we can, we cannot do that manually. So what will, can I go into an OC mode? No, I don't see something like an OC mode. Let's see. So it seems like I need to use this one here. So it's limiting you a little bit on that. Uh, what you also don't get is this interface or this section of the release page where you can read what has changed on one of the newest updates. So for example, the BitX, if you go over to the update section and you click on check for latest release on GitHub, you also get a small button which tells you show release notes. And in there you can read what has changed. It's not in here. Um, as far as I do know, I've not seen it. We also do have network which, which we can set 
And uh, yeah, that is that is Eggswell UI. It's really lovely. And uh, I think I gave you a brief overview. If you want to check it out, again, check out the link in the video description down below. If you want to get yourself a BitX, also check out the links in the video description. I do have lots of links over there with a couple of affiliate and promotion codes. So feel free to use them. You get a discount and I get a little bit. So it's a win-win situation, I think. Apart from that, I thank everybody for tuning in here. I hope you find this information a little bit interesting and are seeking for more open source stuff that is cool like XWell UI. Thanks for tuning in. See you in the next one.